Hey everyone, welcome to Catalyst Energies. My name is Dee, thank you for joining me. I'm so grateful that you're here for this daily astrology report for December 9th, 2020. The moon is in Libra today on the 9th. It's gonna be in an opposition to Chiron and Aries. There'll be a quincunx to Uranus, a sextile to Mercury in Sagittarius, the widow's past brought to light. Wow, um, karma of past actions um, as they affect the opportunities for a new cycle. So be prepared for information to be brought to our attention, to be communicated to us, and for us to think about when it comes to past actions coming to light and the karma. And speaking of karma, we have Neptune in Pisces, now direct, is in a square to the sun in Sagittarius today. So this has been a very, ever since it went direct on the 28th, it has been such a strong, it's been just, it's such a strong influence. You know, Pisces is the accumulation of our karma. It's the 12th house, it's the end of the cycle. And whatever is unresolved in this part of our chart comes with us into the next cycle. And so this is, loose ends that need to be tied up, uh, karma that needs to be dealt with, um, ancestral karma, past life karma is coming to terms with our own past and everything that everything that we've done throughout the cycle of our um, life, basically, or whatever cycle the, um, a chart represents. This area, the P Pisces area, or the 12th house is the culmination point and coming back around to settle up old accounts. Okay, and Neptune rules this area. It is also compassion, inspiration, dreams, um, forgiveness. This is about unconditional love because in the Pisces realm, everything is everything else. We Neptune's the great dissolver. And in this particular degree, it is dissolving us into, into the whole in order to receive a transmission, um, an unbroken chain of spiritual knowledge that we receive as a result of our merging with source. And now that Neptune is direct, it's really, really strong and it can pull us under constantly or um, in a way that we can't escape the undertow, okay? And so this square to the sun today, the sun in Sagittarius is now in the second half of Sagittarius. We've gone from the abstraction of our collective ideals and our belief systems into archetypes. Now we're in the transference period. This is this is where we really dissolve things down and create something new. This is the part where the understanding is now bearing some sort of fruit in order to transmit to others through some sort of collective value system through the culture itself. And this particular degree is about trying to escape from situations and environments that are that we've deemed unsafe and unreliable. And so we want to leave them for the sake of our own survival, but also the survival of future generations. The thing is, the animal that's associated with this degree is a pelican. And as you know, a pelican is an animal that lives over water. It, it needs water, it, it eats, and feeds itself and its entire habitat has to do with water. And so you can't really escape entirely from this environment, even if you do realize that there are problems that are associated with where you're at right now. And so we may want to collectively, we're collectively expressing ourselves through this really strong urge to leave these menacing areas. But the reality is that we can't completely separate ourselves from the source from which we all came. In fact, Neptune in Pisces is so strong that it will pull us back in. Now, the other, the other aspect about this, if we are working, if we're working really well with Neptune, if we have been trusting the process and trusting source and and really gaining the transmission because we have been able to merge in a way that doesn't, you know, lead us into being a victim in some ways. 
then this, this, the square is going to provide the challenge because we're going to want to separate ourselves to a certain extent, okay? Now, if we are trying to get away from something, if we are trying to um, get away from a menacing situation for our own survival, well, this Neptune is just going to pull us right back in, right back into the fold. Like there's no getting away from the ocean because that is the, the central point of existence for this pelican that is characterized as part of this degree of Sagittarius. So it's gonna be uncomfortable and we're going to have to figure out how to rise above it and get to a safer place in terms of our expression. But at the same time, realize that being submerged into this Pisces realm is part of the way that we receive this unbroken chain of spiritual knowledge, okay? Um, along with that, we have the moon in Libra. Like I said, it's in a it's in a, an opposition to Chiron, and this is Libra is about the application of our knowledge in order to find balance and justice, in order to find peace of mind, in order to to make sure that everybody's needs are taken care of within the context of a relationship. While we are talking about knowledge and instruction and the application of those things in order to achieve this. So at this degree with the moon, this is about, you know, the master, when the pupil is ready, the master will appear. And we need to, I think, leave ourselves open emotionally and intuitively to, uh, to find this master or at least be ready for it. And this requires not getting caught up in our own victimhood. Um, otherwise we will miss that opportunity. And uh, this also feeds into where the sun is. If, if we feel like a victim, if we feel like we're identifying with our victimhood, we are going to want to escape these areas that appear to be menacing to us for the sake of our survival. So to find the balance point right here, we, we want to be open and ready for the, the master to appear and, and the necessity for the youthful aspect of us to learn from a teacher that has a lot more experience than us, okay? And again, we're talking about justice, we're talking about fairness, um, and we're talking about peace, okay, with Libra. So there is a quincunx with Uranus today. And again, this is just a need for adjustment because through our knowledge, we want to realize that even in the most empty hours, there's a spiritual power and there's a hope for a rebeginning, okay? But that is, that is an emotional, um, mental aspect, whereas Uranus is shaking things up consistently to, to force us to trust the natural cycles and the faith in the renewal of the cycles. That is the, the very basis of nature. So we may want to apply our knowledge and what we've learned in order to um, welcome and warm up our wayward consciousness. And there's nothing wrong with that, but there'll be a challenge, I think, with this quincunx to Uranus, and it will require some sort of adjustment um, with us because it's not going to just be um, our knowledge that it's not, it's not going to just be our knowledge. And I talked about this today in in the, uh, the daily medicine that we have to really step away from, and, and today's astrology, today's the eighth, step away from, you know, completely intellectualizing everything. And the moon in Libra wants everybody to be happy. It's very people pleasing because there's a lot of malleability here because it's the moon, it's emotional waters. And so that in itself leads us to be kind of wishy-washy about things and um, kind of looking for any position that will allow these scales to be balanced. Whereas Uranus is like, well, I am in fixed earth. And when there are changes, you are going to feel it and you have to learn to trust that entropy is not always going to be, chaos is not going to always happen. You have to trust that these cycles will find homeostasis, but that comes from disruption. How will you know balance without a lack of balance? So it's just gonna require an adjustment and, and realizing that we can't just like, well, we can if we want, but it won't last very long if we are willing to emotionally just situate ourselves in any position in order to find some sort of peace of mind or balance, okay?
because that eventually won't work. And then, like I said, the sun's squaring Neptune, and then the moon's going to come around and sextile Mercury, which again is the bringing the karma to light, bringing the past actions to light, the rectification of the past that will impact the new cycles. And with the moon here in the sextile, it's it's harmonious, it's balanced here, and there's some imagination that we have to employ in order to um, really find some, again, feeling balanced and, and feeling like things are fair and just within, we have to kind of use our imagination, basically. We know that these things are going to come to light, and if we want to be able to um, find and, and maintain a sense of emotional balance within what is going to be brought to light. We have to have some level of innocence and, and imagination and playfulness, I think, in order to actually manage this situation gracefully. So, but the big thing is the sun squaring Neptune, right? Our, both these mutable energies, um, Neptune being in its home sign, moving direct, very powerful. We kind of, nobody gets away with the, um, nobody gets to bypass anything spiritually at this point. And so if we have allowed ourselves to, to be open to the experience, then um, we're not necessarily going to want to completely separate ourselves. We're not gonna want to completely uh, run away because we can't because the ocean is where we gather our sustenance. We can't like just totally separate ourselves from this process. But there is something to be said for not sticking around in a situation that is clearly toxic. Okay, and that is going to be this collective, this really co strong collective expression to move out of this toxicity um, to go somewhere safer. It's just that the square is going to show us that um, it's not as it's not as cut and dry as we think it's going to be in some instances. So. That's the daily for today. Tune in to the intuitive daily message, daily medicine message tomorrow on the 9th in the morning. You can do that on Facebook. If you um, want to like this video, subscribe to this channel, it would actually mean a lot and really help this channel grow and get the information out there. And of course, everything is in the description box below in terms of contact and uh, the website so you can book readings. And I really appreciate every single one of you and I will see you on the next video.